About a week ago, Matt Frad, a guy who runs a Catholic apologetics YouTube channel, had a debate on the issue of abortion. He was moderating it, and he had a woman who was a pro-life activist and a man who has been an abortion doctor for many years. I'd highly recommend the channel. There's lots of good content on it, and it's mostly about religion, but there's even some good stuff that is not strictly religious. The debate was very interesting. In one sense, it was very bland and predictable, but in another sense, it was very interesting, and I think there's a lot that can be learned from it. The reason why it was bland and perhaps uninteresting was because it was, for the most part, the regular sort of arguments that we've all heard a million times on this topic from both sides. The pro-abortion side was going on about how there's no real way to reduce the number of abortions that occur except from better education and contraception, and that outlawing it, all that will mean is that there'll be more unsafe abortions, it won't actually reduce the amount of abortions that actually occur. Well, the pro-life side was arguing that it is really a human inside the woman, and it's immoral to arbitrarily end the lives of innocent humans. Further, she also pushed back against the claims from the pro-choice side that abortion bans would not actually be effective. And she said, however bad the circumstances are, it does not justify the arbitrary ending of human life. So, like I said, these are all the really basic pro-life, pro-choice arguments that we've all probably heard a million times before. One notable thing from this debate, however, was that the abortion doctor was just as chilling as you might expect him to be. His entire argument was very emotionally based. He was constantly talking about all the horrible stories he'd seen of women who weren't able to get abortions when they wanted, and the negative health consequences that, that resulted in. And at one point during the debate, he even got upset with the pro-life activist for referring to babies as babies. However, despite his entire argument being very firmly based on trying to invoke sympathy for the women who he has helped get abortions, there was something very chilling about him. He claimed that he was doing this for compassionate reasons, but there was nothing about his demeanor that really seemed actually compassionate. I don't know, maybe this is just me projecting my feelings on abortion onto him, but it's a feeling that I really was not able to shake throughout the entire debate. And as I've talked about before on this channel, one of his main arguments is just ridiculous. That is, the argument that you can't really affect abortion rates, at least by any way other than pursuing other left-wing policy objectives. And banning it just won't do anything, because when a woman decides she wants to have an abortion, she's going to have that abortion. It's a really illogical line of argumentation for the left to take, and it's certainly something that they do not consistently hold on other issues. Abortion, for some reason, we're supposed to believe is the one thing that when someone decides they want to do it, they'll do it, and there's no way to stop them. Hate speech, Second Amendment, there's so many things that the left wants to restrict access to. And that's fine. I don't have a problem with the government trying to restrict access to things. I may have a problem with the government trying to restrict access to the things the left wants them to. But I'm no libertarian. I don't have a problem with the government banning or restricting access. And I believe, just as the left clearly believes in their revealed preference, that government prohibitions are generally effective at preventing people from access whatever is being prohibited. It is, of course, as my good personal friend Innuendo Studios says. Like, do we really need to explain why stores put junk food you know you shouldn't buy right next to the checkout counter? Because the easier it is to do a thing, the more it happens. I know it's tired to complain about left-wing double standards, but this is one of the clearest. When it's something that they don't want to be banned, like abortion, there's no way whatsoever to affect the rate of that thing happening. It's going to happen whether you like it or not, and there's no reducing it. But when it's something they do want to curtail, when it's something they want to reduce access to, or they want to ban outright, then the easier you make it to do a thing, the more it happens. And the left will always cite the same old tired examples, like say Brazil where abortion is illegal, and America where abortion is legal, and they'll say that, well, Brazil has a much higher abortion rate than America, so the only thing we could possibly conclude from that is that banning abortion makes it happen more. And as I've said before on this ridiculous comparison, Brazil is a very different country from America, it's much poorer, they have a much higher crime rate, and it shouldn't really be that big of a surprise from anyone who thinks about this topic for more than a few seconds, that a country which struggles to protect its born residents 
fails at also protecting the unborn. And also, as I've cited before, conservative states in the U.S. have some of the lowest abortion rates, while liberal states such as New York have some of the highest abortion rates. But okay, this is all stuff that I've gone over before, and for the new people, I'm sure it's a good refresher, but really, what is the point of any of this? I said that there was something unique and interesting about this debate. What was that? Well, I have to confess, this is not necessarily entirely unique. I'm sure I've seen it in other debates. But this is something that I really realized from this debate, with just how much the two were talking past each other. The topic of the debate wasn't actually, should abortion be legal? It was more specifically, is abortion bad? Despite that, it was argued, especially from the pro-abortion side, much more as a debate on whether or not it should be illegal. But the interesting thing about this debate, what I thought really came through clearly, because they were talking past each other, was that they're not really having the debate that people think they are. The debate that they're having is the same debate that I've talked about on this channel previously. They are debating consequentialism versus virtue ethics. This is where the abortion debate very frequently always comes back to. The pro-abortion side goes on and on and on about all the ways in which they think abortion makes society a better place. Essentially, their arguments are very often about how much more convenient it is for everyone to have abortion, and to have it to be freely accessible for most people. And this is actually very true. It is a lot more convenient, at least for many people, to have liberal abortion laws, at least if you endorse the left's sexual ethic. So, the pro-abortion side goes on and on and on about all the amazing results that come with liberal abortion laws, and they're just talking past the pro-life side, because at the end of the day, it's still arbitrarily ending an innocent human life. And for someone that actually believes in virtue ethics, that simply cannot be justified. So, the pro-life side believes that there's such a thing as evils that are so great that no good could possibly justify it. Well, the pro-choice side doesn't even really believe in evil to begin with. They will very often directly say that they believe evil is some sort of antiquated religious notion. And this is something that, as I've said, you see very clearly in this debate from Matt Frad's channel. The pro-life side kept on making arguments, talking about how this is clearly a human person, and how clearly what's going on is unjust. And the pro-choice guy just did not care. He didn't even really try to respond to any of her arguments. All he ever cited was all the amazing benefits that came with his preferred policy. I've already said that this argument was, for the most part, pretty similar to most pro-choice, pro-life arguments. But that was the one main difference. There's usually at least some lip service given to the idea that it's just a clump of cells, or that it's a human but it's not a person, or whatever. But in this debate, the pro-abortion doctor just didn't care. He barely even tried to respond to those arguments. So, why is this important? It's important because the way that we conceptualize a lot of debates is that we're just talking about a discrete issue, and that there's more or less some sort of common framework around which we can discuss this issue. The issue is most of these big issues that we're discussing are really, at their basis, religious. And I don't just mean that in the sense of the traditional religions that we think of. I mean that in the sense of the worldviews through which we conceptualize all of reality. When we're talking about abortion, we're not just talking about abortion. We're talking about the value of human life, we're talking about morality, we're talking about what is the good and what is evil. None of these are easy questions to answer, and the common ground that we might have once held on these issues has been drifting away for a very long time. Thanks for watching. Please donate to my subscribe star if you enjoy this content, or my Patreon, or buy a t-shirt on Teespring. And please remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and share these videos with anyone who you think might enjoy them. And a special thanks to my donors, Emmett Vestry, The Right Cafe, yourself, Siphius Rex, Lita, Quo Pregranator, Haxorius, Adzutko, Josiah, King of Evil Florida and the Moon, Seth Apex, Richard, Cringewalker, Zian Harris, Thomas Thomist, Augustine, and Windowlick. Thank you everyone again for watching, and goodbye.